हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू एन पी टी एल ऑनलाइन सर्टिफिकेशन कोर्स इन टाइटल्ड सॉइल एंड वाटर कंजर्वेशन इंजीनियरिंग आई एम राजेंद्र सिंह प्रोफेसर इन एग्रीकल्चर एंड फूड इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट आई आई टी खड़गपुर एंड वी आर इन लास्ट वीक दैट इज लेक्चर फाइव ऑफ वीक वन एंड द टॉपिक इज वाटर इरोजन कंट्रोल मेजर्स just to give you a reminder of the course content of this week we started in lecture 1 with introducing the solid water conservation erosion etc in lecture 2 we went through causes and types of soil erosion in lecture 3 we saw factors affecting soil erosion and effects of soil erosion and lecture 4 we went through soil erosion mechanics and in today lecture we'll see some of the control measures that can be adopted to control water erosion now erosion control means basically we want to uh, control erosion or in other words we want to conserve soil so the aim of soil conservation is to obtain maximum maximum sustained level of production from a given area of land so that's the that's the thing and for that you remember when we discussed about uh, the when we discussed about the uh, uh, sheet erosion we saw that it is the top fertile soil that is primarily carried away that is that, that is uh, transported during the erosion process so once we the fertile soil is lost then obviously the level of production will be affected and in order to get the maximum sustained level of production we must conserve our top fertile soil and of course the second aim is to maintain the soil loss below a threshold level and also third one is to permit the natural rate of soil formation to keep pace with the rate of soil erosion the ideal case is the case of uh, geological erosion where the rate of soil formation and the rate of uh, soil erosion they are naturally balanced in the case of accelerated erosion or uh, man made erosion we know that the rate of soil erosion will always surpass the rate of soil formation because rate for soil formation is a very slow process that we have already seen so but still we would like to keep the rate of soil erosion to be as close as possible to the rate of soil erosion and that is why we want to maintain the soil loss below a threshold level so that uh, so that uh, the soil formation pace could could be as close as possible to the soil erosion uh, uh, rate now coming to soil loss tolerance theoretically soil erosion should be maintained at a rate that equals to or is below the natural rate at which new soil forms that is what basically happens there is a balance between the soil formation uh, and the soil erosion rate in the geological erosion and that is why that that we say that it's a very slow process we cannot really notice that with our naked eyes on the other hand when the soil erosion rate is much much higher as compared to soil formation rate then it is quite naturally noticeable and that is where we call it accelerated erosion or man made erosion now it is difficult to know whether this balance exists or not i mean it's very difficult basic reason behind this is that though it is possible the rate of soil erosion uh, the rate of uh, do uh, bhaiya ek minute zara aayenge kya hello yes sir ha ek minute aayenge kya zara break kariye because this pen is so kya thoda moti kar liye ha sir wo upar mein left side se jaa to dekhiye teen छोटे-छोटे बिंदु हैं, जहाँ पर कलर सेलेक्ट करते हैं, इसलिए सर मुझे हाँ, हाँ हाँ हाँ, 
यहाँ पे हाँ अभी ठीक है ठीक है भाई या इट इज फाइन ठीक है रिज्यूम करें इससे स्टार्ट करिए हम इससे स्टार्ट करिए कहां से जहां से आपने रोका था ना सर उसी से फिर से हाँ 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 ठीक है ठीक है हाँ हाउ इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू नो वेदर दिस बैलेंस एग्जिस्ट आर नॉट एंड द रीजन इज वेरी सिंपल दैट दो द रेट ऑफ सॉइल लॉस कैन बी मेजर्ड एंड वील वील स्पेंड वन लेक्चर इंटायर लेक्चर ऑन इन द कमिंग वीक ऑन हाउ टू मेजर सॉइल इरोज सॉइल सॉइल इरोजन और सॉइल लॉस इन द फील्ड कंडीशन दैट विल सी सो बट लेट अस एज्यूम दैट soil loss rate can be measured at the moment with our knowledge whatever knowledge we have that's that's possible but the rate of soil formation is so slow the natural rate of formation is so slow that it cannot be easily determined so because one of them because we want to make a, keep a balance between rate of soil loss and rate of soil formation and because it is not possible to determine one of them so it is very difficult for us to know whether there is a balance between the soil formation rate and soil loss rate or not and the average rate of soil formation uh, as you can see the number it is 0.1 mm per year so th from this itself you can visualize that it's very very difficult really uh, to be able to uh, measure or know the rate at which soil is getting formed now soil loss tolerance that is why we finally define a soil terms called soil loss tolerance and their soil loss tolerance basically is defined as the maximal permissible rate of erosion at which soil fertility can be maintained over 20 to 25 years so basically we want to keep the soil loss within a permissible limit which we are calling it soil loss tolerance so that the soil fertility is maintained and uh, for that we are what we are saying is that the soil fertility should be maintained over a period of 20 to 25 years and based on studies a, a mean annual soil loss of 11 tons per hectare is generally accepted as far as soil loss tolerance is concerned that means that simply means that if you are able to maintain annual soil loss below 11 tons per hectare for a given area then it will be po probable possible to maintain the soil fertility for a uh, few coming years maybe 20 25 years or coming years that is what we are interested in now uh, this table basically describes a criteria that could be used to set the level of soil loss tolerance and this has been given taken from morgan 2005 according to this uh, table the soil loss is divided into seven different classes and seven codes are given 1 to 7 one is when the uh, class is referred to as very slight where the erosion rate is less than 2 hec 2 tons per hectare to 7 when it is referred to as catastrophic where the erosion rate is greater than 500 tons per hectare and as we can see that for most purposes the level should be maintained within code 1 to 3 that means this is the acceptable uh, codes that means the class should be between very slight to moderate and that simply means the erosion rate should be less than 10 tons per hectare and this probably will give you an idea why the soil tolerance rate Uh, in the previous slides we saw that was taken as 11 tons per hectare because then that simply means that we will be able to keep our soil loss within uh, moderate levels and that means that will help us in maintaining keeping the uh, soil productivity maintained for a long period of time now coming to erosion control the strategies which could be adopted for conserving soil should be based on certain factors 
and these are four major factors. The first one is covering the soil to protect it from raindrop impact. Second is increasing the infiltration capacity of soil to reduce runoff. Third is improving the aggregate stability of soil and fourth is increasing surface roughness to reduce velocity of runoff. In our previous class when we discussed about the water erosion mechanics, we saw that uh, there are three processes involved detachment, transportation and deposition. Now, detachment about detachment when we discussed, we, we saw that uh, it is the raindrop impact effect or it is the flowing water that is responsible for a detachment process. On the other hand, when it comes to transportation, it is the uh, uh, runoff or the overland flow. That simply means if we want to check erosion, we have to keep a check on detachment and uh, erosion processes or transportation processes and that simply means the two agents which are responsible for these two processes that is raindrop impact and flowing water that has to be checked. And that is, that is basically the concept uh, behind the strategies which are adopted for erosion control. If you look here, covering the soil to protect it from raindrop impact. So, if we cover the soil, obviously we know uh, we have seen the raindrop impact erosion that when the raindrop hits with its kinetic energy to the bare soil surface uh, that breaks down the soil aggregates and that causes detachment of soil particles. So, if the soil, uh, soil is covered by some kind of plantation or some kind of grass, then obviously that cover will absorb the kinetic energy of raindrop impact. That means, um, aggregate disaggregation of the soil mass will not be there, that means detachment will be limited. Similarly, if because if the soil cover is there, then obviously water will be hold for a longer period time on the soil surface and that will allow more of infiltration to take place. And uh, that simply means as a result the total runoff that could be generated uh, that will be reduced. Then the third is uh, improving the aggregate stability of soil and for that we have to add some kind of organic matter into, uh, into our soil. And for that what are the steps uh, the what, what we is done we will see little later when we talk about the conservation measures. And lastly if we increase the surface roughness that is by covering the soil then obviously uh, the velocity of runoff will be uh, conserved that means the kinetic energy of the flowing water will be less that means the erosion capacity will be less and that means erosion could be control. So, these are the some of the strategies which are adopted for controlling erosion. Now, coming to erosion control measures, water erosion control measures, they are broadly classified into two groups, agronomical and biological measures and engineering measures. And we will discuss first about the agronomical and biological control measures. And obviously, as the name itself suggests, erosion is controlled through crop or vegetation. So, agronomical or biological, the name itself suggests that it is the crops or vegetation that are basically used for controlling erosion. And basically, uh, in that means that we need to do our cultivation in such a way uh, which shall minimize erosion. And obviously, it aims at providing a suitable crop cover for as long period as possible during rainy season that whenever rain is, rain is taking place, if our soil surface is covered. So, obviously, with our several lectures we have seen now that that simply means that will absorb the kinetic energy of the falling raindrops or it will offer resistance to the flowing water and as a result the erosion capacity of either the raindrop or the flowing water will be. Uh, uh, less and that means the um, detachment and transportation um, processes will be under control. And the measures typically which are adopted under agronomical and biological control measures are crop rotation, crop covering, contour farming, strip cropping and mulch tillage or stable mulching that these are the five different types of uh, 
uh, measures which are normally adopted under agronomical and biological control measures. Now, let us start with crop rotation. So, crop rotation is defined as a more or less regular succession of different crops being grown on the same piece of land. And this is done because rotation of crop reduces erosion and increases the fertility of soil. So, that simply means that as you can see here example, there is a, a plot having four different fields. So, year, year 1 the crops chosen are canola, wheat, field peas and oats. And when we go into year 2, the same pro crops are being grown, but they are the fields are changed. So, oat has come from uh, this plot to this plot, field pass has come from here to here, canola has gone from here to here and wheat has. So, that means there is a circular rotation. Similarly, if we go into year 3, then again it is circularly rotated. So, oat comes here, canola, wheat, field pass and year 4 again wheat comes here, wheat, field peas oats and canola. So, this is how uh, the crops are rotated. So, that is crop rotation that is regular succession of different crops being grown on the same piece of land and uh, basically this happens in uh, two possible ways. One is that uh, the, the different crops have different uh, root, gr root growth pattern and because the root growth pattern is different. So, each plant or each crop has a tendency to take nutrients from a particular zone of the soil. So, if you keep on changing the crop that simply means the entire the root, root zone of the soil it can be utilized and nutrients are extracted from different places. If we grow same crop year after year that simply means that the same portion of the root zone is uh, being utilized by crops and that means the remainder of the portion whatever nutrients are there they remain unutilized where in the where it is being used that is you being used excessively and that means there are no nutrient left. So, that is one advantage of, uh, 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 of uh, crop rotation and uh, of course, it varies with land because all crops cannot be everywhere. Economic condition of farmers because if you have to change crop then obviously, you should have some cash in hand and cropping system prevalent in area this is very important point because if I talk about say Bengal where IIT Kharagpur is located, then farmers here have a tendency to grow uh, paddy during the um, Kharif season followed by paddy during the Rabi season. So, paddy and paddy is followed as you can see that it is against the principles of crop rotation. If you go to North India, mostly you will find that uh, paddy or rice is grown during the Kharif season followed by wheat in the winter season or uh, Rabi season and then some kind of legume crops are taken in the jayad or summer season. So, that means there is a natural rotation being followed by um, farmers in northern India. And suitable crops for use in rotation are legumes and grasses basically because these are nitrogen fixing crops legumes especially are nitrogen fixing crops that means they add nutrients or organic matter to the soil. So, this they they strengthen the soil from nutrient point of view and that means uh, the productivity or production will be ex can be expected to be much higher from such soils which are healthy in nature. Then next uh, uh, measure is uh, uh, cover cropping and in the cover cropping uh, it is grown as a conservation measure either cover crops are cover crops are grown either during off season or in between rows and for ground protection under trees. So, in our previous class when we were talking about the ill effects of erosion or erosion then we saw in between rows a, a faulty agricultural practice in between rows if we allow bare soil then obviously, uh, when raindrop sits there will be detachment and because there will be flow of velocity here without any kind of resistance. So, the erosion will be much much higher. So, when we say cover cropping then in between rows certain crops are grown and that simply means that uh, the, the soil area or the land between the rows crop rows is protected. Then common crops are which are used for its cover crop are 
rye, oats, beans, peas, alfalfa and grass because of two reasons. One is they provide good cover against erosion. So, because they spread on the surface though say they provide they cover the soil surface uh, that, that is the purpose that is cover cropping and they furnish hay or fodder and serve as a soil building crops. So, if you grow, grow uh, alpha alpha grass, so obviously not only covering, but you are also getting some hay or fodder for uh, animals in the area. And if you grew, go for beans, peas or leguminous crops, then obviously already I mentioned that they are uh, uh, nitrogen fixing crop. So, they add organic matter to the soil. And of course, these cover crops are also grown under tall trees like rubber to protect the soil from the rain drop impacts. So obviously, if the if the surface below a tall tree is, uh, if you, you can imagine that from a tall tree, if whatever water is intercepted, if that falls, the kinetic energy will be much much higher. So, if the soil surface is protected with some kind of cover, then soil erosion will be minimized in that case. So, that is the second uh, type of uh, agronomical measure that is cover cropping. The third uh, agronomical measure which is adopted is contour farming and in the contour farming uh, it is defined as tillage practice of applying all treatments on contour and I think you know contour what contours are that is uh, the points having uh, same elevation they are referred to as contours. So, we identify that and uh, we perform all the field operations like plowing, planting, cultivation, harvesting across the slope rather than up and down the slope. So, if, if the slope is um, in this direction say for example, uh, of course, it is very difficult to um, say from this graph, but so, say for example, in this direction. So, our what all our agricultural opera operations we do across the slope not along the slope. So, obviously, in that case what is the uh, what happens is that uh, the flow path is broken and also the velocity of flow will be checked to a larger extent. And uh, uh, it is generally reported that contour farming reduces soil loss up to 50 percent while enhancing the crop yield by 10 percent because we are allowing we do not allow water to flow away here. So, obviously, more soil more water is conserved in the soil that means more water is available for crop production and that is why uh, crop yield also is enhanced. Then contour cultivation saves power and its effectiveness depends on slope stiffness and slope length. It, have, it saves power because if you do cultivation practices along the slope then obviously, you can imagine that uh, while traversing up the slope the energy consumed by farm implements will be much much higher. So, the allowable contour length because uh, uh, there are two things one is length as well as slope the allowable contour length are 180 meters at 1 degree, 30 meters at 5.5 degree and 20 meters at 8.5 degree and so on. So, uh, larger the slope uh, smaller will be the slope length which is quite obvious. And then there are certain specific cases like for example, on steep slopes or under conditions of high rainfall intensity and soil erodibility, contour farming alone may increase gulling because row breaks may re release stored water. So, obviously, there is always a danger uh, because there is a slope and one of the if any one of these um, row if they break that simply means whatever is stored water is there that will have tendency that will flow with a much higher velocity and much uh, greater impact and that means it might result in row breakage uh, uh, and uh, may cause gulling that is gully generation it might start. So, usually under such circumstances such special circumstances they are supplemented by strip cropping which we will be seeing next. So, strip cropping is basically a practice of growing alternate strips of row crops across the slope of the land. So, that is why strip because alternate strips of row crops are grown across the land. So, as you can see here for example, uh, there are strips this was one strip this is another strip this is yet, yet another strip. So, corn, oats and hay. So, they are grown alternatively. And 
generally close, close growing crops such as hay, wheat or other forages are alternated with strips or row crops such as corn, soybean, cotton, sugar beet which simply means that if you grow corn first then next a, a close growing crop say for example, uh, if season permits then hay or wheat could be grown depending upon the season. And then again you could have another uh, row crop that is means say for example, uh, soybean. So, that means you have a row crop followed by a close growing crop and then again a row crop. And what happens is it reduces runoff flowing through the crops rows. So, if this is a row crop, so whatever water is generated this close growing crop will erase that water that means the flow velocity will be reduced and then it also increases the infiltration rate of the soil under cover conditions because um, soil uh, water is get uh, arrested here. So, obviously, this will have tendency to check the um, uh, check uh, uh, or rather uh, because water is stored there. So, obviously, the infil more water could, could infiltrate into the uh, soil because of these regions. Then strip cropping could be of three different types buffer strip cropping, contour strip cropping and field strip cropping. There are three types of cover uh, strip croppings are possible. Uh, let us see one, of, one after the other buffer strip cropping means the strips are grass or legume crops laid out between contour strips of crops in regular rotation. So, wherever we have the regular crops grown in between that them the grass or legume crops are laid out uh, that is basically they are grown on contour. The next is contour strip cropping where crops are arranged in strips or bands on contours at right angles to natural slope of land. So, basically here as you can see the contour lines are being followed for cultivation. So, there are row crops and in between these row crops uh, some uh, alternate uh, crop will be grown. So, uh, grass or legume could be grown. And third one is the field strip cropping where the crops are laid out in strips across the slope but only approximately on the contour. So, here the, uh, the idea is same I mean the idea is on in three cases same that you first uh, you have row crops and in between that you grow the strips of grass or legume crops in between. And uh, 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 the I only thing is that in this case it is the contour lines which are followed in total here contour lines are followed as close as possible where in this case contour lines are not, not so strictly followed. So, buffer strip cropping, contour strip cropping or field strip cropping. So, here the buffer the grass and legume are used as, used as buffer crop where in, the, in these cases the cro crops itself are being used for uh, alternating. Then the last uh, measure is multi tillage or stubble mulching and obviously, it is a crop and soil management practice that utilizes the residual mulchage of preceding crops. So, as you can see that if you, when you harvest a crop then the, uh, the, uh, the stubble is left in the, in the field itself and that stubble is used as mulch uh, that means, uh, in between the rows that, um, that stubble is used to cover the soil and two major benefits these mulches break the fall of the raindrops and that is dissipate kinetic energy and reduce the surface flow I am mean, very similar to what cover cropping, but what we are doing instead of growing another crop we are using the stubble of the previous crop and that means, means that there will be of no tillage or very minimum tillage that will be required uh, for, uh, for this cover cropping kind of thing. So, in case of mulch tillage. So, that is that is the advantage, but very similar to the cover cropping these mulch uh, much stubble use is used as mulch very similar to uh, the concept of cover cropping. Then we come to engineering measures and there are four types of engineering measures which are normally adopted bunts, terraces, 
vegetative waterways and gully control structures and in on each one of them we will be spending at least a minimum of one week. So, that is why I am not going to give you much detail today, but just to just, just a brief introduction about uh, these uh, topics. So, burns are are then embankments built across the slope of the land. So, across the slope that is very important and of course, burns could be of different types and typically they are also you, along all field boundaries you will find burns where they are referred to as peripheral burns. And two types of burns which are commonly used for soil erosion purposes or water erosion purposes they are referred to as contour burn and graded burn and week number 3 we will be spending entire week on the burns on discussing what are burns how to design them and things like that. Then next engineering measure is terracing or terrace which is uh, the practice of cutting flat areas out of a hilly or mountainous landscape to grow crops. So, uh, wherever you go to any of the hilly stations you will find because there is a hills there is a steep slope. So, cultivation cannot take place. So, in order to facilitate cultivation uh, the flat areas are cut and so that some kind of steps kind of structures are there and uh, so uh, the cultivation could take place. And the types uh, two types of terraces which are commonly uh, adopted are broad based terraces and bench terraces. So, again week number 4 will be spent on terracing and design of terraces. Next measure is vegetative waterways uh, which are natural or constructed waterways shaped to required dimensions and vegetated for safe disposal of runoff from a field diversion terrace or other structure. So, they are nothing but a natural or constructed waterways or channels where uh, uh, some kind of uh, vegetation is allowed to grow so that the water could be taken away uh, at a safe velocity or uh, without causing any kind of erosion. And week number 5 will be spent on vegetative waterways and then we will see the details of how what are those and how to design them. And the last uh, uh, engineering measure is gully control structures and gully control structures are uh, adopted to control gully erosion. We have seen gully erosion already or this is most severe type of erosion and the measures which could be adopted are vegetative measures, temporary gully control structures and permanent gully control structures. And again uh, we will spend several weeks uh, uh, on uh, seeing what are the gully control structures and how to design them. Uh, in greater detail if you remember that is what we have seen. So, this was all about uh, the water erosion control matter in brief. We spent more time on agricultural and biological measures and little less on engineering measures because in coming weeks we will be spending a lot of time on engineering measures. Thank you very much.